Hello, Brickman here with the LEGO Marvel Super Heroes set 76051 Superhero Airport Battle. This includes 807 pieces and retails for $79.99 in US dollars. So without further ado, let's get into this. All right, so here is the actual airport part of the set. And this is pretty big overall. Uh, it does include, we'll start over here on the side, it has the gates and it says no entry. And you could move it around as you would plead to do so. <laughs> um, and then you just see some boxes here, which goes with a play function later on. Another sticker here that just says air traffic control. And you could also see here, which is another play feature we'll get to. And uh, if we look over at the detail on the top, you can see how that sticks out and all. And then it does include this siren that you can spin around and it then extends its height to quite a bit because of this antenna. It also has a satellite. Now let's look at the interior. So here on the first floor, um, very little interior detail. There's just this fire extinguisher and then a wrench clipped onto the wall here. And you can see this little mouse hole here. And then that goes along with the play feature in which you would explode these boxes here. So you take this micro figure, Ant-Man, and when you stick him in there, you can then push down and these will pop out like so. So that works out pretty cool. Let me take a closer look at these boxes. They have a few uh, nice <laughs> Easter eggs. One, two, Stark Industries. Then aim, and then this one says hammer, which is even a rather more nostalgic one. Uh, so then you also can see, though, that there was this door as well, and it says restricted area, authorized to minifigures only. And that's pretty interesting. You know, it's nice to see that it just says minifigures, so that's cool. Next up, here is the second floor. And you can just see that it has this computer using a sticker and this glass cup. It doesn't include, like, any airport workers or anything. Uh, then you could open up the cabinets, and then there is an exploding feature then. You see this here, and you would push down on that, and then these t wall, the wall would break apart. And you could see how that works. Only for the top floor... There is this spinning white chair, and there are also these two computer screens with two different stickers. And this does work very well with doing the angles to get these three windows. And once again, I already discussed the exterior. So now we'll jump to this here small vehicle. Uh, while it's small, it is pretty long, and you can see it seats one minifigure, and it does have opening doors. And then it just says truck 1 MDJR-86. <laughs> That's just a sticker. And the front looks pretty nice, I would say. Of course, it is pretty weak. This doesn't even cover anything. It's just completely wide open. But it is cool enough. You can see there's that stuff in the back. And then the main feature is that you would have these three, they include three suitcases, lined up like that. And then basically, while in action, Say we get Giant Man here, he would step on that and this would explode and the suitcases would go uh, exploding all around. And now we take a look at these suitcases and there's more great Easter eggs. One, two, Wakanda, Sokovia, and then this just says Bill. I don't think this is any necessarily specific Easter egg, but yeah, this is of course Black Panther's home and then what was in Age of Ultron, Sokovia, that made-up city. And now for the most hated build of the set. This is, of course, the third full-sized Quinjet vehicle we have gotten in LEGO form. And, uh, <laughs> it is not, it's not that exciting. This is now, like, a dark blue and a smaller version, so it is kind of different, but we didn't, it wasn't so necessary. I mean, you watch the movie, it was actually a bigger part of the film than I had originally expected, but still, not many people are happy with it. Uh, so this got yellow lights all around too, you could see, and like older Quinjets, the wings do fold in and out, so here it is in flight mode, and then this can actually open up like that, 
which is better than from the uh, Age of Ultron Quinjet. So I like that. Uh, and you can see it has that big sticker on it. And it has the three wheels that it goes on. <laughs> uh, take a look on the inside then. And you can see that it actually seats two minifigures rather than one. And it does have the... I'm trying to get a good view of it. I can't. Let me remove this actually. All right. You can see it's just got that sticker there. So that's pretty cool. And then... As for play features, the main play feature would be that you turn on this gear here, and then that comes out. That's hidden from beneath, and this is just two stud shooters lined right up next to each other. And then there is still nothing excited exciting on the underside. And then we take a look at the back, and it doesn't actually look that bad. It has these nice red lights or firepower on the back. And then you could also open this up. And what do we have? Not much interior space, as in not at all. And so you do have this rope that you can attach minifigure to, and then have them come swinging onto or out of from the Quinjet. And now for probably actually the best part of the set. This is an entirely brick-built Giant Man figure. And he actually came out quite nice. Um, so you can see that there's really stickers all around. Here, 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 here. It does get a bit abundant, but it's fine here too. But then there is just the one printed the piece. Uh, when you move down his mouthpiece, you can then see this whole part is printed, and that comes out really nicely. Even though it's probably even the most pointless part, because that doesn't happen in the film. He doesn't move down his mouthpiece. But yeah, this is kind of updated from the original Ant-Man minifigure. Alright, so, when comparing minifigures, you can see how different they are. And it is actually a good thing, because in the movie, you can tell that his uh, helmet is much different. So, I actually respect that. Uh, so, he does have a lot of movability. You can move his head uh, um, completely 360 degrees. By the way, now let's just take a quick look at this back. Pretty ugly, yeah. Uh, he can move his arms. They are on ball joints, and then his hands can just move sideways like that. So this other one. And then his legs can just move up and down. And another big flaw, uh, he has these holes on the side of his leg. They don't come out so great, great, but overall I do think that this is pretty awesome. Um, also for Ant-Man is included this then micro figure of Ant-Man. And this is really great to have included in the set because it was on high demand by several fans. It has printing all over it to make it look like a pretty decent Ant-Man. And then there's even a second one included because it's a small piece. And that's just awesome to get. You could say, like, this is Hank Pym or something and then have them team up. So it's great to have that. And when we just line up the three different Ant-Mans, you can see his little growth spurt he's got going. So that's pretty cool. You get, I mean, if you have that minifigure version of Ant-Man, then you really have all three that you would need. Now for traditional minifigures, here is just same old Captain America from Age of Ultron. This was the only original Civil War set that this one, this version, was released in, if you know what I mean by that. But he's still good as ever. Now for the brand new Iron Man, Mark 46. Uh, he does look pretty good and accurate, though the only new print would be his torso and then back torso. Because his leg, his leg printing and helmet printing are the same, used from Age of Ultron. And then you could open up his helmet, and you just see he has his average Tony Stark face underneath. Much cooler, probably, Iron Man updated suit. This is War Machine in his newest MCU uh, mark. Not sure exactly what this mark would be called, but now this is no longer gray. Yeah, not silver, they went with gray. Uh, but now it is black with silver printing all around, and it looks awesome. He really did come out quite nice, better than I expected. You know, I wasn't getting this set to get this war machine or anything. But you can see all the printing on his helmet, too, and he has, like, those red eyes. Those come out awesome, and he's pretty bulky because of his back here. They really get quite intricate with the amount of detail. 
and even has a stud shooter attached to the back, which works just like that. Good, very detailed torso printing and leg printing. With all that bulk removed, you can just see his back torso printing. Now, we'll also take a look at his face, which is interesting. They originally made a new face print for him when he came out in the Iron Man 3 sets. Now they're just reusing Cyborg's face, which I think that they really should have just used the Iron Man 3 one. I, I don't know why I emphasize that. The Iron Man 3 one, because that was probably much better. But, eh, whatever. Now, here's repeat minifigure number 2. This is Bucky Barnes, a.k.a. Winter Soldier, and... He's the same as the Black Panther Pursuit one. The only thing that's kind of different is he just includes a different type of gun. Uh, and you could just check out his printing, which is pretty decent, I suppose. And he does reuse Chris Pratt's face. I just said Chris Pratt. I could say Star-Lord's face. Or Owen Grady's face, but you know, it's Chris Pratt. Now for the brand new Scarlet Witch minifigure, which I did forget to put her in at the beginning. I apologize for that. But here she is now, and her updated version looks much cooler than the original one. The only thing that she lacks now would be leg printing, but that still is more accurate. Um, she does still use uh, Supergirl's face, you know, with those two expressions. And then her torso printing is now different, and it looks pretty good. Uh, let me just remove her hair again. You can check that all out. And then she also have this, has this nice cloth piece that works out pretty nicely. And now, also more accurately, she has these pink glowing magical telekinesis thingies, whatever you want to call them. Because previously they were blue, and that was inaccurate. Now for the one and only completely uh, brand new minifigure, as in not a variant of anyone or anything. This is, of course, Agent Carter, uh, no, well, yes, Agent 13 slash Sharon Carter. Uh, she has this less commonly used gun, and then a pretty good torso printing, a rather uncommon leg piece, no, but nowadays it's more common. Uh, her face, though, is brand new, as well as her torso, and you can just see her two expressions there. And then this hair is nice because this is not that common. And also there's her back torso printing. So pretty good minifigure to get. Finally, here is the instruction booklet, which there is just one. And it has the Lego Marvel's Avengers advertisement, the website <laughs> advertisement, uh, then the other Civil War sets. I have all three. And then all the pieces, which carries on. Four. Four pages, wow. And then also look at the play features, and that's it. Well, here is also then the comic book included in the set. Just take a quick look at these. And if you don't know by now, I do enjoy reading through them very much, even though they don't have any word bubbles or anything. Great cover, too. All right, so overall, this is a, a pretty good set. It does have just a very good amount of minifigures, you know, you just want the minifigures, because it has all those superheroes, so people say it's one of the best Marvel set minifigure collections out there, uh, if you feel that way, I, I would kind of agree, I don't know, I kind of like getting villains too, um, but yeah, I like the builds as well, besides that Quinjet, I don't think I'm ever going to use that in anything, <laughs> So, that all being said, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for lots more videos coming real soon. Bye!